This video is for people who don't know much about CAD CAM systems and need a quick overview of how to use Millwright. When you start Millwright for the very first time, it will start at the drawing page. Notice along the top of the screen are seven tabs. They are equivalent to seven pages in a book. When you move the mouse over any of the tabs, it starts to blink in a reddish color to let you know that the mouse is over that particular tab. Once a tab is red, you can click your left mouse button to switch to that particular page. Each page is different and each has different menus and functions. At the middle of the setup page is a data entry box with four tabs. These data fields allow you to set defaults for Millwright and for the particular job you're working on. A data entry field allows you to enter values from the keyboard or select items from menus. Unlike the tabs and menu buttons, which blink red when the mouse is over them, the data entry fields have a rectangular bar that is animated in some manner, such as dots that move around the rectangle. This cursor bar is animated to grab your attention so that you can easily determine which data field is active. There are different styles of data entry fields. One style has a little red arrow pointing downward. This arrow indicates that if you click this data field, a menu will appear. For example, I'll click the NC Format data field and a list of post processors appears. If you don't want to make any changes, you can cancel the menu by pressing the Escape key on the keyboard. Or you can move the mouse outside of the menu and when you see the mouse icon change to show the words Cancel Menu, click your left mouse button. You can also cancel a lot of the menus by clicking your right mouse button. The type of surface data field also has a little red arrow pointing downward, so if I click on it, a menu appears. And I can cancel this menu by clicking the right mouse button. The geometry deviation field has a numeric value, but there's no red arrow in this field. Instead, its background is slightly darker than the other fields and it has a three-dimensional effect that makes it appear sunken into the surface. These are fields that you can type values into using the keyboard. The data fields that have two tiny red arrows are fields that have only two options. When you press the Enter key on those fields or click them with the mouse, they switch back and forth between the two options. The engraving list page is the easiest page to get started using Millwright. This long rectangular animated cursor bar identifies this area as a data entry field. This is item number one in this list of text items. The list is currently empty. When a data field is active, Millwright usually has a message at the bottom of the screen to provide a description of the data field or to remind you of some of the keyboard shortcut keys that are active for that particular field. In this case, the message tells you that if you want to create text to engrave, all you have to do is start typing. You don't have to click any buttons or select any menus. So I'll type some text. As soon as I start typing, another message appears at the top of the screen to let me know that when I'm finished typing, I can either press the Enter key or the up or down keyboard arrow keys. So I'll type some text and then press the Enter key. Now that I've specified some text, Millwright displays two pages of data fields along the right side of the screen. The text page allows you to specify the text and the properties page allows you to specify its machining parameters in which layer the text is on. All of these data fields already have values because whenever you create text or geometry, Millwright fills in all fields with whatever the default values are. After you become more familiar with Millwright, you can change those defaults. You can replace any of the values in these fields by moving the cursor bar to that field and then typing a new value. As soon as you begin typing, the color of that data field changes to something very different to make it obvious that you're changing the value in that field. If you want to cancel, press the Escape key 
and the original value returns. If you want to edit a value rather than replace it, then either click on the value field with the left mouse button or press one of the editing keys on the keyboard, such as the backspace, home, or end keys. The home key will put the cursor at the first character, and the backspace and end keys will put the cursor at the last character. For example, I'll press the backspace key. The color of the field changes to let me know that I'm editing the value, and a blinking cursor is at the very last character. You can use the left or right arrow keys on the keyboard to move the blinking cursor bar. When you're finished changing a field, press the Enter key to keep your changes. You can also press the up or down arrow key on the keyboard to both save your changes and move the cursor bar up or down in this list of data fields. At the Properties page, you can specify the machining parameters for the text. The data field for the tool has both a red arrow and it's darker in color and has that three-dimensional appearance of being sunken into the background. The red arrow shows that if you press the Enter key or click the left mouse button, you'll get a menu, and the darker sunken appearance shows that you can also type values into it. The value in this field is the tool number. If you click your left mouse button on that field, you'll get a menu that lets you specify the tool parameters. The field for the tool number also has a red arrow and that three-dimensional sunken appearance. If you click this field, you'll get a tool list. You can edit any of the tools in this list, and you can delete the tools you don't want, and you can create new tools. However, you don't need to use this tool list. You could enter values directly into these fields here. The cleanup pass allows you to make a very light cut after the text has been engraved, which can make the edges smoother. If you don't want a cleanup pass, just leave the cleanup depth at zero, which will display as a blank rather than a zero. I'll enter a cutting depth of 0 0.05 and click the OK button. Some of the fields that were in the tool menu are also listed here on this properties page for your convenience. If I switch to the drawing page, I can see what the text looks like. I can also edit the text from this page. Along the left and bottom of the screen are rulers to show where the text is located. If you prefer the mouse be a crosshairs rather than just an arrow, click the snap button and then set use a crosshairs to yes. Now it's easy to see that the center of the text is at x0, y0. When the mouse is not over anything in the drawing, the right side of the screen will show the zoom and pan buttons. Many of the buttons have keyboard shortcut keys. If you move the mouse over one of the buttons and let it sit for about a second, a brief message will appear to describe the button and the shortcut key. For example, move the mouse over the pan button and let it sit for a second. The message reminds you that to use this button, you press and hold the left mouse button and then move the mouse. This allows you to shift the view of the drawing. Notice that the W in Window and the A in All are different colors. This is to remind you that those letters are the keyboard shortcut keys for those menu buttons. If you move the mouse over one of those buttons, you will be reminded of this. Therefore, when you want to use the Zoom Window function, you can either click this button or you can press the W key on the keyboard. In either case, the mouse will change to a magnifying glass and you can draw a window around the area you want to zoom into. If your mouse has a wheel on it, you can turn the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. To edit the text, move the mouse over the dotted box that surrounds the text. This is the character box. The data fields will appear on the right side of the screen. 
If you move the mouse off the character box, those data fields will disappear. At the lower right bottom of the screen are messages. The messages change depending on what you're doing and where the mouse is. When the mouse is over the character box, the message is some keyboard commands, edit this item's parameters. Notice the E key is a different color than the other letters, and this is to remind you that the E key is the keyboard shortcut key. In other words, when the mouse is over the character box, you can press the letter E on the keyboard to edit that particular text. Or you could slide the mouse over to those parameters, whichever is easier for you. You can then edit any of the data fields, and you can see the results immediately. For example, I'll change the spacing between the letters to a negative 10%, and now you can see the letters are slightly on top of each other. When you're finished editing the parameters, move the mouse back into the drawing. As soon as the mouse leaves the data fields, a question mark appears because Millwright doesn't know if you want to quit editing the data fields or if you're just moving the mouse out of the way. To let Millwright know that you want to return to the drawing, click the mouse once in the drawing. When you're finished specifying the text, you can click the 3D view page to get an idea of what the toolpath looks like. The message along the bottom of the screen reminds you to use your left mouse button to rotate or tilt the toolpath. The mouse wheel and the middle mouse button allow you to zoom in or out. You can also use the keyboard keys. The blue lines are the tool feeding down into the Z direction and the dotted red lines are the rapid moves. If you turn off the rapid moves, you will see only the cutting moves. If the toolpath looks okay, you could switch to the NC program page. Along the right side of the screen is a button to show the toolpath. This is not the same as the 3D view page. This will show the toolpath of the actual NC program. Therefore, if you make any changes to this NC code, you will see the change if you click Show Toolpath. For example, I'll change this 0 to a 4. And now you can see that I just ruined this letter. But if I click the 3D View page, the engraving looks correct because this page shows the toolpath as the drawing specifies it to be. Millwright will automatically update the NC program whenever you make changes to the drawing. For example, I'll go back to the engraving list and change the text. And now I'll switch to the NC program page, view the toolpath, and you can see it's a completely different NC program. Also notice that if I highlight more than one line of text, and then click this button, only those highlighted lines are shown. When the NC program looks correct and you're ready to send it to your CNC machine, you can click this button to send it out your serial port, or click this button to save the file on a floppy disk, hard disk, network drive, or USB drive. You can also just click the file button and save it this way. A serious mistake that people often make when they're new to CAD CAM systems is that they save the CNC program instead of the drawing file. A CAD CAM system creates two different types of files. One of them is the drawing. This is the important file. The drawing is equivalent to a blueprint. It specifies what you're doing. You want to save the drawing so that you can open the drawing on another day and then make changes to it and then create a new CNC program. You don't need to save the NC files because you can create them whenever you want from the drawing files. You normally save the NC file only temporarily in order to transfer it to the CNC machine.